Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about the add-on skills because there are a lot of questions revolving around it such as like how it works, what does it even do, and what's the most efficient way to level things up. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want you to do is to type in the keyword. Today's keyword is wake me up. Yes, wake me up. It's not wake me up inside, it's just wake me up with underscores all lowercase, okay? Once you type that in, you're going to go to your systems, you're going to go to get campaign items, receive item account, and right here you're going to see David plays NGS. Click on this and you get 50 star gems as well as 7 more red gold memories. I was really hoping we were going to get manga memories because uh, I still need to buy a lot of stuff out of that manga shop. But unfortunately we got red gold memories instead. But either way, 50 star gems is pretty nice so make sure to pick that up. Now while we're on this menu over here, if you did make an ARCS ID from Twitter, you get 50 star gems. I think everyone gets this. The next up is an SG Scratch Apology. This gives us another 100 star gems. Very very nice and last but not least of course we had the maintenance extension which is 20 star gems so as you can see here this is a whopping 170 star gems very very nice make sure to consume them all all right with all that out of the way the next thing you might have noticed is carol how on earth do you have 860 hp and 160 pp without any food buffs yes this is unbuffed ladies and gentlemen this is a metric butt ton of hp and a metric butt ton of pp and this is simply because of our add-on skills information over here and you can see that I have a lot of stats for free. So how do we get all of these free stats? The first thing I want you to do is when you are in Kavaris, there is actually an NPC over here called the General Tactics Instructor. I didn't even know this guy existed until I watched Critic Caster's video and uh, apparently he actually has some quests as we talk to him here, you know, add-on skills quest which will actually give you 500,000 EXP. This is a lot of EXP which will definitely help you level up any of your other classes if you do want to level them up so uh, i definitely recommend picking up these quests over here if you do want that extra exp to just help you level up your classes because you're going to need to level up your classes in order to learn the add-on skills so what you do is you talk to the class counter then you click on add-on skills over here and then over here there is generate add-on skills then you select whatever class you want, so in my case, the Braver. And then in the beginning, you will only have add-on skill 1. You will not have unlocked 2 or 3 yet. The way to unlock 2 or 3 is simply increase the level of your main effect. So as we can see over here, the Braver's main effect is critical hit rate up, so it gives you critical chance. However, there are sub-effects as well. So what's going to happen is you are always going to get the main effect. However, you're going to get two random sub effects out of this list. Now, in order to learn these add on skills, you're going to need your class specific EX cube. So they'll look like these yellow cubes over here and you get 10 of them every time you over level. So when you're level 60 and you hit 61 on your Braver, you will automatically get 10 of these special Braver EX cubes. However, if you're doing it on a gunner, then you'll get 10 gunner EX cubes, so forth and so on. So it's not that bad to get a bunch of these EX cubes. However, if you are like me and you've only got two classes at level 60, are you screwed? Well, don't worry, there is a workaround over here and that is through the title system. When you get your class to level 30, you will get rewarded one class specific EX cube. And when you hit level 50, you'll get another one. So you can see over here, I did the absolute minimum and I made sure that I got all of my classes to at least level 30. And the reason for this is simply because I needed that one class EX cube so that I can learn the add-on skills on every single class to get all of those free stats. However, if you wanna go the extra mile, then hit level 50 and you'll get two of them. And of course, for every level you gain after level 60, you'll get 10 of these cubes cubes so uh, that's basically how you get these cubes in order to get more add-on skills so the interesting thing about these add-on skills is after you've unlocked add-on skill 3 by getting level 16 or above on your main stat it actually unlocks add-on skill 3 for all your classes so for example on my force over here you can see i only have level 2 of my technique weapon potency up however this is with add-on skill 1 if i use add-on skill 3 i am guaranteed a level 10 technique weapon potency or above and this also applies to my sub effects so add on skill 3 is going to be the way to go for the classes that you do not play a lot so in my case it's literally every class except for the braver 
So on the Braver, I just keep rolling add-on skill once until I get a very high level main effect of critical hit rate up, which is level 20, which is the maximum. Everything caps is out at level 20. That includes all of the sub effects as well. So once I hit level 20 on this, then I don't need to roll skill one anymore. I can start using the add-on skill threes because then I'm just rolling for the sub effects as there are four different sub effects. However, as a Braver, I really only want two. I want the rest assigned heal amount up as well as the HP up Braver. These are the only ones that I actually want. However, for classes that I do not play a lot, for example, the Hunter, since I will only have one or two EX cubes, I want to roll on the skill three simply because I want to get the level 10 or above. So there's a floor, there's a protection that the minimum roll that I'm going to get is going to be level 10 for melee weapon potency up, which will actually give me 2.5% melee potency. And if you get lucky and you roll a level 20, then you'll get 5% melee potency, which is really awesome. Now, the interesting thing about the main effects is the main effect cannot roll down. So if you looked at my fighter over here and we go to skill one, you're going to see that my critical hit potency up will generate level 14 or higher. The reason for this is because I rolled critical hit potency up level 14 already. So this means that the lowest roll that I can get for critical hit potency up or critical damage is going to be level 14. However, if I roll anything higher, let's say, for example, I roll level 15 or level 16, then my next roll, the lowest roll I can get is going to be level 15 or level 16. So it's really, really nice. And there is a protection for the main stat. However, there is no such protection for the substats. So the substats over here, for example, jump power up or HP up fighter, all of these are going to have a random roll between 1 to 20 if I use add on skill 1. However, if I use add on skill 3, it minimizes the RNG. It goes from level 10 to level 20. So there is the benefit of using level 3. However, the downside of using add-on skill level 3 is simply the Meseta cost. It will cost 50,000 per roll. It doesn't need any more extra fighter EX cubes. It'll still use one cube per roll, but it costs a lot more Meseta. As you can see here, add-on skill 1 only uses 5,000, skill 2 uses 10,000, and skill 3 uses 50,000. So this is the price you're paying in order to deal with less RNG. So why does any of this matter? It matters because it is free stats for your entire account. Yes, all of these add-on skills over here, this entire list that I've unlocked over here, even though I did it on this character on ship 2. When I switch to my ship 1 character, to my ship 3 character, all of these stats carry over to those characters as well. So technically, you only need to max out every single class on one character, or you can do it across multiple characters, and all of your add-on skills will carry over to the entire account, regardless of what ship they're on. So that is freaking amazing. And the most important part I want to point out is the HP up over here. Since level 10 is the minimum roll, because we use the add-on skill stage 3, which guarantees that the lowest roll you'll get is level 10 on your substat, I want you guys to count how many classes there are with me. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you've got a total of nine classes. And as long as all of those classes roll HP up on their substat, you are guaranteed 90 HP just from that. You don't need to augment your armor, your weapon, nothing. 90 HP extra, just flat 90 HP. There you go on your entire account. All of your characters get it. It is freaking bonkers. So please take advantage of this. And this is the minimum roll. 90 HP is the minimum roll. If you get lucky and you get the level 20 version, which gives you 20 HP per class, you're actually going to be rolling around with 180 HP, which is, you know, that, that's quite a big deal. That's a lot of HP that you get for free. And on top of that, every single class offers unique main class and subclass skills. So for example, the Waker's main class gives you PP up. This actually gives you 10 PP at level 10. And if you do get it up to level 20, that's an additional 20 photon power just for free. It's really crazy. The Bouncer gives you dash and glide PP recovery, which actually allows you to recover PP while you're moving around. This is something that I've always wanted. I've been begging Sega to do. They finally put it in. Sure, it's some convoluted way to get it, but you can still get it now. So now I can run around in a combat zone or in the open field and my PP will slowly regenerate it's a big deal encore jump this is insane you gain an additional double jump when you hit an enemy with an attack while double jumping so basically if you're fighting a boss for example dark falls you know there's a lot of verticality there you double jump you hit something boom you can double jump again really really crazy then of course we got the legendary hp up here we got on the braver 
This I maxed out, I got to level 20. Keep in mind, getting to level 20 is extremely difficult. I want to put a disclaimer out there, I rolled 360 times. That means I leveled up my Braver 36 levels over the cap before I actually got to level 20. I was able to get to level 19 of the critical rate up after about 80 rolls, so that's 8 levels. So if you just want to hit level 19 on every class, it's a lot easier to do that. However, that final level to get to level 20 is going to be a pain in your butt because it is just pure RNG. And yes, this took me a very long time to get this extra 0.5% critical rate increase, but it's worth it because now I have extra 10% crit rate, which is really awesome. We've got the rest assigned heal amount over here, allows me to heal more HP, you know, it's 5% more healing from my rest assigns. And of course, I've got the HP up on Braver, which is plus 12 HP. Now, of course, I want to aim for level 20 on both of these substats. However, that is going to be way down the line because there is no protection, no guarantee on this. You're literally rolling between level 10 to level 20, no protection, just pure RNG. So I'm not going to be going for that anytime soon because I would much rather spend my efforts and get all of my other classes main stats all the way to level 19 slash 20 first. So before I switch ships in order to show that all of these add-on skills actually carry over or are account wide, I just want to flex a little bit by eating my food buff. So here's my Kavar's recipe. If you guys don't know, I have a video about it, but uh, it gives me all of these bonuses if I eat the food. And after eating it, I want you guys to take a quick look at my HP. I am at 903 HP and 170 photon power. This is insane. This is absolutely bonkers amount of HP and bonkers amount of PP. So yes, please take advantage of the add-on skills. It is an end game thing or something to incentivize you to play all the other classes, get them all to 60. However, even if you're an extremely lazy player or a casual player that doesn't have a lot of time to play, at the bare minimum, get all of your classes to level 30 so that they all get one class EX cube. That way you can go to the add-on skills. Make sure you have unlocked the add-on skill three on your main class. And then all you want to do on the classes that you're not going to be playing, just click on it and then do add on skill three and just settle with whatever role you get. However, if you're really unhappy about the substats, maybe you got HP recovery upon joining a trial as well as burn resistance, and you're like, dang, I really want the HP up and the photon art charge movement speed up, then maybe try to get your hunter to level 50 so that you get another class EX cube in order to do one more reroll and hopefully you get the substats that you want. Now, as for how to level up, I recommend just spamming the Kavar's yellow triggers. This is the easiest way to level up. I simply just go here and spam it over and over and over. Now, you might be worried about the enemy level being level 55. So the workaround that I've been using is I main Braver because this is my main class. This is literally the only class that I play. And then I select subclass and I select whatever I want to level up. So for example, let's say that we want to level up the hunter to level 50. I would select my subclass as a hunter. So as I'm earning EXP from the yellow triggers, 50% of that EXP will go to your subclass. So if you have boosters, you can earn up to a million or 1.2 million EXP per run of the Kavaris yellow triggers and half of that EXP, so that's like 600,000 or like 500,000-ish, will actually go to your subclass, which is still a significant amount, especially if you're on the lower levels, you will basically be gaining one level every single run for your subclass, and that is freaking amazing. So in no time, you will get your classes to level 30. It literally took me like, I wanna say two hours, maybe three, Three hours to get all of my classes to level 30 at the bare minimum and I'm just slowly working on the other classes to try to get them all up to 50 so that I can do another reroll on specific classes that I'm not happy with their substats. Now before I end the video I just want to showcase what a role looks like for the add-on skills. You're going to click on add-on skills, we're going to click on generate add-on skills on whatever class you want, so in my case the Braver. Since my critical rate up is already at level 20, I will be using the expensive roles. However, if you are just trying to level up your main class, remember always use the add-on skill 1, the cheapest roles, because you don't care about your substats, you literally only care about increasing the main stat. That's literally what I did for like 360 rolls in order to get this to level 20. So just stick with the skill one, save your Masetta, because literally skill three, this is like 10 rolls of skill one, okay? But since I am going for the substats, I will be using stat uh, skill three. So we go skill three over here, and you're gonna see over here that, hey, we got critical rate up plus 20, this is guaranteed. We got rest assigned heal amount up level 19, that's really good, 
but we don't have our HP up over here. Unfortunately, we got the burn resistance up braver level 10. Now, what it's going to ask you to do now is to register the add-on skill. So if you liked any of the roles over here, you can save it onto one of three presets over here. So you have a total of three save slots. So for example, my slot number one is absolutely garbage. It's critical rate plus 20 and I have two substats at level two. So you can overwrite it by clicking here and saying yes to overwrite it. However, let's say that you rolled something really bad and you don't want it. You can click on don't register and it will just throw it away and your roll will be invalid and it won't save any of those stats. However, I want to save these. So I'm going to click yes. So now that I've saved those skills, the next time I go to add on skills over here, you can click on add on skill set and you can see that there is a list for every single class. So for example, my Braver preset number two gives me critical rate up plus 20, gives me HP up Braver level 12, and rest assigned heal amount level 10. However, let's say for whatever content I'm doing right now, I don't need these stats. Maybe I need the burn resistance because I'm going to the volcano region or whatever. Then I can immediately change it simply by clicking on Braver preset one, and it will automatically change it to critical hit rate up level 20, to my burn resist, level 10, as well as the rest assigned heal amount level 19, which will actually give me 9.5% more healing potency, which is really cool. However, keep in mind with this preset over here, I will be losing the HP up level 12, which is this extra 12 HP. So you just got to keep that in mind. And that is what all of these different presets are for. You can simply save multiple presets that maybe you got really high rolls on and you can just switch it whenever you want when you're in town. It's very, very useful. All right, with all of that out of the way, let us switch ships. So here we are on my ship one character. We're just going to take a look at my personal information, character information and add on skills. And you can see that again, I have all of the skills. As you can see here, critical hit rate up level 20. So that's 10% more crit chance and all of the stats here are active and you'll also notice i have gained a significant amount of hp as well as pp even though i am still only level 45 over here because uh well i haven't been working on my ship one character a lot i haven't even unlocked kavaris yet so uh yeah i am very very behind on the ship one character but we'll get there eventually last but not least i know a lot of you guys are wondering Caro, you didn't talk about the Waker at all. What about the Waker? What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave Renova's video of the Waker in the description below. If you have any questions regarding the Waker, please check out his video as he goes in depth and explains everything there. Um, I am just not really a Waker player, which is why I'm not really going to be covering much information regarding the Waker. Now, there's still plenty of stuff that I want to cover in this update because there's just a lot of changes. However, I don't want this video to be too long, so I will be cutting it short here in tomorrow. Tomorrow's video I will be talking about the augment exchange because there are some massive changes over there which I'll be covering in tomorrow's video. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.